In today's video, I thought we'd do something a little different and do a little bit of math. So today's subject is finding inverse functions, and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, now let's talk about inverse functions and what they are and what they do. So basically, if you have a function such as like f of x equals 2x plus 3, and we were to look at what values you would get out of it, for some function of x, you're going to get a y value. And so this is a one-way function, and the question is, well, what would happen if we went the other way and had that value and went back and we could get the original x? So I'll take a look at this. Let's do a like x and y. So let's say that uh, x is 0, that y would be 3, x is 1, y would be 5, all right? Because 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. Now, let's calculate the inverse function, and then we'll go back the other way. So, for example, if we had 3, we could calculate 0. If we had 5, we could calculate 1. So, let's talk about how you do that. There are basically just a few steps. The first thing is to recognize that y equals f of x. So, we'll assign this as y equals 2x plus 3. All right? Now, at this point, what we do is we can swap the x and the y. So we could replace x with y. We say x is equal to 2y plus 3. And now, simply, we would solve for y. All right, now let's continue where I picked off. I had to move because uh, it was uh, too much going on at the previous location. So anyway, we now have swapped the values of x and y. And now we're going to solve for y. So we want y on the left side of the equation and everything else on the right. So in this case, let's, we can do a couple different things. We can rewrite this as 2y plus 3 equals x. This is basically symmetry. And that's because I want to put the y on the left side. We could do it the hard way, but this works just as well. So let's move this 3 over to the right. So since we're adding 3 to this here, we're going to subtract 3 here and subtract 3 here. And notice that I'm not putting it under the x because we can't combine it directly with x because there's no variable. So 3 minus 3 is 0, and we are left with 2y on the left-hand side and x minus 3 on the right-hand side. Okay, so at this point, we can uh, divide this side by 2 since we're multiplying something times y. If we divide by the exact same thing, it cancels out to 1 and then we can divide the entire right side by 2. So now our equation is y equals x minus 3 over 2. And so now the last step is that we can conclude that the inverse of the original x is going to be x minus 3 over 2. All right, now let's try it. Uh, let's take 5. So 5 minus 3 is 2. All right, so let's say 5 minus 3 over 2. So 5 minus 3 is 2 over 2 it equals 2 over 2 equals 1. And as you can see, we get back our original value. So that works. So let's test 3. So we have uh, 3 minus 3 divided by 2. And that's equal to 0 over 2. And anything divided by 0 divided by anything is simply 0. And as you can see, we get our original value back. And so the equation f of x equals x minus 3 over 2 is the inverse of this equation right here. f of x equals 2x plus 3. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at the equation f of x equals 4x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2. So now it's getting to be a little bit more complicated, but that's okay. Uh, let's do some example values, x and y, let's say x of 0, 1, so if x is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, and we're left with a 1, and then in the denominator, 3 times 0 is 0, and we're left with a negative 2, so that's going to be negative 1 half. All right, let's try x at 1, so 4 times 1 is 4. Uh, 4, 4 plus 1 is a 5, so our numerator is 5, and the denominator is 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, so 5 over 1 
equals five. Now, like we did before, here's the first step, and we're say that y is equal to four x plus one over three x minus two. And now we're gonna swap the, the values. We're gonna say that x is equal to four y plus one over three y minus two. And now we're gonna solve for y. Now, when we have a fraction like this, with a polynomial, we are going to need to get this out of this fraction area so that we can isolate y. And so let's take this value over to the left. And in order to do that, you can multiply each side by 3y minus 2. All right, so this cancels with this, and we're left with 1. And we're left with 3y minus 2 times x equals 4y plus 1. So let's use the distributive property and multiply x through all of these values. When we do that, we have 3y times x is going to be 3xy. We have minus 2 times x is minus 2x. And that will be what we had left over over here, which is 4y plus 1. Now, what we want to do is we want our y on the left and our x's on the right. So let's move this minus 2x. So since we're subtracting uh, 3xy by minus 2x, we'll do the opposite. We'll add 2x. And then over here, I don't have any x's, so I'll put this off to the side, right, like this. So minus 2x plus 2x is 0, and we're left with 3xy. And then over here, we have 4y plus 2x plus 1, okay? Now, we're getting closer. We would like all of our y's on the left-hand side, and all of these are terms are being added together. So in order to get the 4y over there, we're going to simply subtract 4y. Now, I didn't put it over here because this is a 3xy. All right, so 4y minus 4y is 0, and we're left with 3xy minus 4y equals 2x plus 1. Now we're getting closer. Say, well, wait a minute. I've got all of these. I've got an xy and a 4y. How am I going to isolate y? Well, back up here, when we use the distributive property to multiply this x through, so we can do the opposite right here and factor out a common term of y. So in other words, y, if we take the factor out, that'd be 3x because we that means 3x times y, and that meets this term. And then here we're going to take this y out, minus 4. And that's it can equal 2x plus 1. Now y is isolated. And all we need to do now is recognize that now y is multiplied by some term. And we want to get rid of that and move it over to the other side. So we can recognize that if we're multiplying something times y, all we have to do is divide by that exact value, which is going to be 3x minus 4 and divide this side by 3x minus 4. That cancels to 1 because this is 3x minus 4 divided by 3x minus 4. And we're left with y is equal to 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. Now at this point, we can recognize that the inverse of the original function is equal to this. So now we can say that the inverse after the minus 1 is going to be 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. And now let's test. We're going to go backwards, so let's put in this minus 1 half. So we're going to test minus 1 half. So we put that in for x, we have 2 times a negative 1 half plus 1 over 3 times a negative 1 half minus 4. So 2 times a minus 1 over 2 is simply minus 2 over 2, which is simply minus 1. So that's equal to minus 1 plus 1 over. Now, minus 3 halves minus 4. So that's going to be, we, we don't actually need to calculate this out because minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So let's say we'll put it in here, minus 3 halves minus 4, and just leave it like that. But we can recognize that this is 0 over minus 3 halves. Sorry, I'm running out of room. Minus 4. 
Well, zero divided by anything is zero, and we get back our original value. Now let's test five and see if we get back one. So the inverse function be two times this value of five plus one, so I'm going to put the x right there for the value of 5, divided by 3 times 5 minus 4. And that substitute that here. Even though this is the y value, we're going the opposite direction. So let's solve this. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 over 3 times 5 is 15 minus 4. So that's equal to 11 over 15 minus 4 equals 11. So 11 over 11 equals 1. And as you can see, we get back our original value. I just want to let you know that there's a 15% off free standard shipping on all merchandise. And here is the new math t-shirt here. This is the Gimme More Math Pac-Man shirt. And I thought that was a lot of fun. And if you'd like to check that out, I'll put a link in the description and also in the upper right-hand corner of this video.